Hello everybody, it is Dean Z speaking to you from my basement. Today I want to talk to you about K through JD, going straight through versus taking some time off. Uh, most people at most schools have taken one, two, a couple years off. Some people have taken considerable amounts of time, but there is uh, usually a, a fifth, a quarter, a third of the class that is going straight through. So I want to talk about how do you make that decision and are there any downsides to going straight through. So I want to start by saying if you are sure that that's what you want to do, you feel a lot of conviction in your heart, you've taken some opportunity during your college years to explore the profession of law and had some chance to get some you know professional experience inside an office, then I think I speak for all admissions directors when I say we'd love to see your application. This is in no way do I want this episode to sound like you need to do one thing or another. Uh, so if you feel ready and you're confident, go for it by all means. But I want to talk today to the people who maybe don't feel so ready and confident or are, are seeing real challenges in getting themselves over the finish line of, of the application process. Now, I know you do not tune into this to hear the Dean Z story, but I, I don't really know how to talk about this without talking a little bit about my own personal story. My mother went to law school when I was eight years old in uh, the 70s. It was very unusual and it was hugely inspirational to me. So from about the age of eight, I was confident that law school was the path for me. Then my mother died when I was 19 years old in college, and that really caused me to second guess my path. And in particular, in my senior year, when it came time to take the LSAT and start applying, I really was questioning, wait, why Why am I doing this? Is this just because I admired my mother so much? Or is this something I independently want to do? And so I made the decision, I'm going to take a couple years off and work and try to think about this more and make sure it's what is the right path for me. Uh, and I got a lot of pressure back. Uh, in particular, one of my mother's law school professors actually called me. I don't know how he got wind of my plans, but he he told me it was a huge mistake, that I should definitely go straight through, that if I didn't go straight through, I would never do it. And I just needed to stay on this path and keep grinding out things academically. Uh, it was hard to say thank you, sir, and move on from that. But I did, and uh, I've never regretted it. So uh, I will say I'm, I'm familiar with the pressure that people can get from family members or from your own internal sense of achievement. And uh, I will say if you're feeling that, you will be so glad if you pump the brakes a little bit and, and think about what you're doing. Again, if you don't feel that, great. Um, the other problem that sometimes comes up uh, that makes me question whether people should be applying to law school in a given time frame is the opposite. It's not that they're feeling pressure. It's that this is the path of least resistance. It is um, they don't really have a great idea about what they want to do after college and uh, law school is respectable. And so and they're good at taking tests more or less. So that seems like the way to go. You if you're in that camp, too, I would seriously urge you to think twice. Let's talk first, though, about whether it will be harder for you to get in if you're going straight through, because people look at the, the numbers and say, well, most people have taken time off, so this must be uh, something that law school admissions offices are looking for. In some ways, yes, like that, that is true, and I'll get to that in a second, but it is also a reflection of our applicant pool. Most people are taking time off, and we are simply uh, responding to that and who we admit. If you are interested in going straight through though, and you have really made the most of your time, that's a, like I say, that is a great candidate. So you should be looking for ways to um, maybe volunteer um, in legal settings or maybe get a summer job in legal settings, uh, maybe join a, a group that works on legal issues. A pre-law group is one thing, or you know, a, a volunteer organization uh, doing, um, public interest kind of work, doing legal work. There are a lot of different ways you can expose yourself to the world of law and do so in a way that will demonstrate to an admissions office, I'm taking this seriously, I am mature, I know what I'm doing. So if you've done that in terms of your uh, 
likelihood of getting admitted, you should be in great shape vis-a-vis -vis people who have taken time off. Why do I say that if you're feeling doubts, uh, you should definitely listen to them? Obviously, you know, there are all kinds of things in this world that we do in the face of some personal doubt, and it's hard to have complete certainty about anything. But law schools will always be there. We are not going anywhere. Um, you know, there, there's no reason a year or two or three um, is a plenty of time for you to both, uh, for lack of a better term, I'm going to say goof off a little, maybe not do like a serious, you know, law job, but do something that you've wanted to do uh, or just relax a little bit, you know, wait tables or something like that. Um, and oh, here is admissions cat. I was trying to ignore him, but he will not be ignored. Um, anyway, you know, what was I saying? Um, <laughs> it's plenty of time to do both something enjoyable and maybe something more serious and more exploring of either a legal career or a career generally. And if you take that and then you take that time, you pursue those different routes, and then you feel like you are ready to go, you are going to enjoy law school so much more. You're just going to have confidence that you've made this right decision, that you've made it for yourself. You're going to have confidence about why you're going and what you want to do with your law degree. And in general, you're going to develop maturity, confidence, and perspective that will serve you so well, both as a law student and in your future legal career. I've honestly never met somebody who took time in the face of their own doubts and then regretted it. Uh, but I've met some people who didn't listen to their own heart and then uh, and plowed forward and then thought, why, why am I doing this? So I think it takes a lot of bravery. I felt like doing for my own part, when I listened to my own gut and, and not the advice of others, I felt like that was maybe one of the bravest things I'd done, at least at that time. And uh, I'm very glad I did. Remember, your goal is not just to get into law school. Your goal is to thrive in law school and to enjoy the process. And I only have my own uh, experience to, to speak from. Uh, but I will say I ended up loving law school so much because I'd taken that time. And I'm, I'm confident that I wouldn't have if I had just plowed ahead. Uh, I loved it so much. I made this my career, talking to people about law schools. So... Good luck with making that decision. If you want to talk this out with somebody, I would really suggest talking to a pre-law advisor, maybe even a law school admissions office, a professor, maybe not people who have a lot of expectations for you, like your family members uh, or even your friends. Pe get advice from people who know you a bit, uh, but maybe aren't tied up in your success as their success. It, it can be hard to um, separate yourself from the expectations of others. And it's important that you're doing this for yourself. All right, that is all I have on that subject. And now I want to talk about grammar. And since I'm sort of in the mood of talking about my parents and law, I will mention my father was also a lawyer. And he, the first piece of grammar advice I ever remember getting was from him. And he was obsessed with it. He used to say it a lot, and it is this. It was possessive before a gerund, he used to say mysteriously to me at a time in my life where I didn't know what a possessive was, and I definitely didn't know what a gerund was. But it turns out it means a gerund is basically just an ing word, a verb that has been transformed into a noun. Into a noun. So um, let's say you bring your friend a cup of coffee, and then your friend says, I appreciate you bringing me coffee. If your friend is my dad, the friend says, you mean I appreciate your bringing me coffee, at which point you say, please don't ever bring me coffee again, dad. I'm sick of hearing about possessives before gerunds or something like that. Uh, and they are very rare. I mean, I think this is, I think it is definitely, unlike some rules that I've talked about, I think far more people do not do this than do this. Um, but I, the reason I'm bringing it up is because I was recently talking to a 1L at Michigan whose father is also uh, very into grammar, and he also always talks about possessives before gerunds. So I just think, you know, maybe there is this uh, group of people who are 
at uh, an age to be hiring people who really love possessives before gerunds. And you're definitely not going to go wrong by using it. So think about it. Consider it definitely one of the more optional grammar things I've ever talked about. Okay, I'm going to go before uh, admissions cat destroys the house. He's trying to push over boxes again, but at least he is not meowing. So we're grateful for that. Thank you all for listening. I hope you found this useful. Please, um, would love to hear your feedback and suggestions. Please leave any comments in the comments below, as you know to do. I don't even know why I bother telling you this. Or send me an email at law.jd.admissions at umich.edu. And um, that was the cat, if you could hear that. And put vlog in the subject line. And uh, as always, I want to say thank you to Dustin, but a special thank you to Dustin's assistant, Dylan, his incredibly cute daughter. And I want to say her name, Dylan, because maybe she's listening to this and she will hear her name. And um, then when the pandemic is over, I can babysit because I love babies. Okay, I'm going to stop talking now. Wherever you go, go blue.